Dr. Shelby L. Tate Sr. and Mother Doris Tate in their absence. We thank God for another day, another time that he has given us to be able to bring the word of God to you. Our Sunday school lesson today is a good one. Oh yeah. And today is December the 17th, 2023, Rose Hill Missionary Baptist Church. I'm going to go on and get with the scriptures. And uh, because we have quite a few verses, and so I'm going to try to go over all these if I can. And if I can't, then we do have others that are here that are able to do it. So starting off, the subject of our lesson today is the family of faith. Devotional reading is Psalms 9, 1 through 14, background scripture, Genesis 38, Joshua 2, 6 and 22 to 25, 2 Samuel 12 and 24, Ruth 4, 13 to 22, Matthew 1, 1 through 17. I'm going to go on and get uh, started with our lesson. As we look, um, those that have their books, you can look on page 138 where it speaks of the lesson aims, which is after participating in this lesson, each learner will be able to, one, identify the three fourteens of the text, two, explain the purpose of documenting Jesus' lineage, lineage. Three, state a way to value personally his or her own genealogy in Christ while avoiding the danger noted in 1 Timothy 1, 4 and Titus 3 through 9. I did uh, quite a bit of study and I think last Sunday I mentioned to Reverend Smith that this was going to be uh, somewhat of a difficult, but then once I got to study and I saw it, it wasn't, wasn't too, too difficult. Amen? Amen. All right, so let us go on and get started with our verses. Um, verse number one, it says, The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Matthew wrote this particular gospel to show who Jesus Christ is and why his life is important. The word Messiah means anointed one in Hebrew and Greek. Mm -hmm. It was used for priests and kings and later referred to a savior for the Jewish people after the fall of David's royal line. The New Testament explains what it means for Jesus to be Christ. Mm -hmm. Matthew's original readers, likely Christian Jews, still active in their synagogues, knew about promises made to Abraham and David. Jesus fulfilled these promises and the rest of the gospel will explain how. Looking at verse two, Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. Um, I'm gonna go on and read the rest of these, a couple other verses, and I'm gonna explain them at the same time. So three says, and Judas begat Pharis and Zara of Thamar, and Pharis begat Ezram, and Ezram begat Aram, and Aram begat Amenadab, and Amenadab begat Nason, and Nason begat Sal Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz and Rachab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse. Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon, of her that had been the wife of Urias. When we look at Matthew's um, covering one, uh, the second verse down to 6a is what I have here, uh, it covers a genealogy of about 1,100 years. It lists three important men from the book of Genesis, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These men are significant because they represent the time when God chose Abraham and created the new nation of Israel. In Genesis, God promised Abraham that all families on earth would be blessed through him. Isaac was born as a miracle to Abraham and Sarah when they were old, as we remember. The promise was then fulfilled through Isaac's 
second son, Jacob, who was later renamed Israel. This made Israel the namesake of the nation from which Jesus came. The 12 sons of Jacob, also known as Judas and his brothers, are considered the founding fathers of Israel. They became the ancestors of the tribes of Israel. Does anybody have anything they want to add to that? Or? Judas's descendant would fulfill Jacob's words about the scepter. scepter. Let me make sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. I'm going to spell it to you. So S C E P is in Paul, T is in Tom, R E. Staying with Judah. Matthew's first deviation from the pattern was Thamar, Judah's daughter-in-law. She was left childless when her husband Er, Ur, died. When Judah refused to care for her son, she became pregnant by him and had twin boys, Pharis and Zara. In Matthew's, we see that God cares about non-Israelites and women. This shows that salvation is not just for Israel and is more than just political freedom. We also see God's care for a real human family, even though they have flaws. It's clear that God is willing to use imperfect people to keep his promises, amen? Mm -hmm. Pharis and Ezra, uh, known as Hezron, went to Egypt during a famine in Canaan. Their father was involved in selling his brother Joseph into the slavery, but Joseph helped during a widespread famine. Everybody's familiar with that story, right? Aram and Amadab were born in Egypt and lived there for part of the 430 years before leaving in 1447 BC. Amadab and Nason also lived in the wilderness for 40 years. Salmon was part of the first generation that conquered Canaan around 1400 BC. Rachab, also known as Rahab, was a Canaanite woman who was a prostitute. She became a hero in Israel's conquest of Jericho. Her story shows that even in Jesus' family tree, there were people who sinned, but God continued to work to redeem them. Yeah. The story of Boaz and Ruth is told in the book named after Ruth, a Moabite woman. She is the third non-Israelite woman mentioned in this family history. When Ruth had a son named Obey, it was brought, it, excuse me, it brought great joy to her mother-in-law. Everybody's familiar with that story, right, mm -hmm. Naomi? All right, so, and Jesse originally offered his older sons as candidates for kingship, but the Lord chose Jesse's youngest son, David, instead referring to David as the king and emphasizing his position in Jesus' family tree calls to mind promises God made to David. Chief among these promises was that David's throne would be established forever. Matthew 1, 6b to 11 represents the second third of the genealogy covering about 400 years from 1000 to 586 BC. Bathsheba is referred to as the wife of Uriah, Uriah excuse me, instead of by name. This may highlight that she was likely a Hittite like Uriah and emphasizes her first marriage that was destroyed after David called her to his house. Reminding the reader of David's serious mistakes helped to balance any admiration for the king who was chosen by God and received many blessings. All right. Anybody want to make any additions to any of what I've said so far? <coughs> Excuse me. Let us look at the seventh verse. And Solomon begat Robom, Rep Robom, and Robom begat Abia, and Abia begat Asa. So David had many wives and children. When he died, Solomon became king. Solomon was the last king of the United Monarchy of Israel. He was unfaithful later in his reign, which led to the kingdom being divided. Solomon's son, son Robam, made a foolish decision by listening to his friends instead of wise advisors. This caused the kingdom to split as the Lord had decreed. 
due to Solomon's unfaithfulness. However, God kept a remnant of David's family as he had promised. This ver the verse lists the names of King Robom and his successors who ruled over the southern kingdom of Judah in Jerusalem from 931 to 740 BC after Israel's 10 northern tribes revolted. Abia was not a righteous king, but his son Asa and grandson jo jo Josephat were righteous. We're looking at the eighth verse, and Asa begat Josephat, and Josephat begat Jerom, and Jerom begat Ozias. So Joram did evil things, breaking away from his father and grandfather's ways. Ozias, who's known as Oz uh, U Uzziah, did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Matthew skipped three kings and a queen between Jehoram and Uzziah. Going to the ninth verse, and Uzziah begat Jotham, and Jotham begat Achaz, and Achaz begat Ezekias. The kings of Judah listed here are some of the best, Joatham, Ezekias, and Josias. Assyria conquered Israel during Hezekiah's reign in 722 BC. Judah survived this crisis partly because Hezekiah remained faithful to the Lord. Later, Josiah was praised for restoring worship. Looking at the 10th verse, and as Ezekiah begat Manasseh, Manasseh begat Ammon, and Ammon begat Josias. These were some of the worst rulers of Judah. Achaz and Manasseh and Ammon, the prophet Jeremiah said that the fall of Jerusalem was partly because of Manasseh's bad rule. Anyone want to have anything to say on that? Looking at 11, and Josias begat Jochinias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. Josiah's brother, Jochinias, and his brothers were sent away as captives. The Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem and the temple in 586 BC, killing many people and taking the rest to Babylon. This event marks the end of the second set of 14 generations. Looking at 12, and after they were brought to Babylon, Jokonias and Salathiel, and Salathiel beget Zorobabel. I hope to say some of these names are kind of difficult. This one here, uh, let me, I'm going to go on down, continue down here because I'm, I got these, this is explaining all, I'm going to explain all this at one time. So let's go to 13, and Zerubbabel begat Abud, Abula begat Elik, Elikim, and Elikim begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadak, and Sadak begat Achim, and Achim begat Elud, and Elud begat Elazar, and Elazar begat Methan and Methan begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Explaining those verses, this uh, covers about 600 years of family history. The Jewish people faced hard times in Babylon, where they were taken away from their land by God's plan. The throne in Jerusalem was never restored. This period led to the hope for a new king from David's family, which Jesus fulfilled in unexpected ways. Joelashim, Salathiel, and Zerubbabel represent the 70 years of exile in Babylon. After Babylon was defeated by the Persians, King Cyrus let the people of Judah go back to Jerusalem in 538 BC. Zerubbabel played a key role in rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem, which was finished around 
516 B.C. Zerubbabel was, is the last king mentioned in the Old Testament in verses 13 to 15. Matthew lists nine names from an unknown, unknown source. The Bible doesn't have any information about these men. Their lives from the time when the temple was rebuilt to Jesus' adoptive paternal grandfather, Jacob. This is mentioned in Matthews 1 and 12. The Bible doesn't have any information about these men. Their lives are from the time when the temple was rebuilt to Jesus' adoptive paternal grandfather. The last part of the family history are carefully written. Matthew changes his usual way of listing descendants with Joseph. Joseph is Mary's husband, not a blood relative of Jesus, Matthews 1 and 18 says, not in our printed text. Jesus being part of Joseph's family was a choice, like adoption, rather than something natural. Mary is, Mary is the fifth and final woman in the family history. Unlike the others, she was not a non-Jewish person and was a virgin when she became pregnant. Mary accepted God's plan for her with faith and humility, as you see in Luke 1, 26 to 38, and also that's mentioned in uh, lesson number four, showing why he chose her to raise Jesus. Calling Jesus Christ marks the beginning and end of the family history. The list of 14 generations from Abraham to David, David to the Babylonian exile, and the exile to Jesus shows the important roles of Abraham. David and the exile in Israel's history. This emphasizes how God's promises were fulfilled. Abraham received promises for Israel and the world also, see, and you see that in Matthews 1 and 2a, David received promises for a kingly, kingly line in Israel. The Babylonian exile marked the end of kingship in Judah and raised doubts about God's promises, especially to David in Psalms 89, 46 to 52. But only 14 generations later, Christ was born. So 17, which is the last verse, so all, gen all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations, and from the carrying away in Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. So my conclusion is some of us learn very early, others learn later on in life. And that is challenging sometimes, and sometimes heartbreaking, to belong to a family. For all of us being reminded of the mix of righteous people like David, along with those who famously fell in sin, also like David, in Jesus' own family line, is a word of comfort. No matter who we come from, we can look for God's hand at our work in, in our families. More than this, Jesus' genealogy is a word of comfort because it is a word about our Lord Jesus Christ. In him, God fulfilled promises he made by Matthew's count as early as 40, 42 generations prior. The lineage of Jesus shows how God moved beyond people's sins and selfishness to use them in his plan for his Messiah. This genealogy is the first evidence Matthews represents of Jesus' Messiahship, and certainly not the, not the last. God uses imperfect people to accomplish his perfect plan. Amen? Amen. And that's, that's the end of my lesson. I know it's, it's a lot of reading, but it's, it's pretty much what I put down, so. <laughs> All right, so if anyone else wants to tackle some of this, you are certainly welcome to. Well, I, I oh. don't see, uh, mm -hmm. as, as I was reading it, the title uh, family, family of Faith, and as you were reading it and, and I, you know, just hashing it over in my mind, it's obvious we see the faithfulness of God.
God. Mm -hmm. Through all of the ups and downs that come with life, through mm -hmm. all of the behaviors of individuals, the wickedness, mm -hmm. the, 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 the famines that, that showed up, the going into exile, mm -hmm. the, the fall of, of, of Israel, the rebuilding of it, you know, just all the different elements that come with being alive, God has never stopped his promise mm -hmm. from coming to pass. Regardless if men are faithful, God is faithful. Yes, yes. He watches over mm -hmm. his word and he uses everything. It may not be God sent, but it will be God used. Like one of the things you said about David. Mm -hmm. God selected David. That David was God's choice. Mm -hmm. um, Saul was the people's choice. But David, I mean, was God's choice. And God chose David knowing all the things that David, by any means, mm -hmm. was David's hands clean. Mm -hmm. But yet it doesn't matter your shortcomings, your mistakes, your sin, and that gives hope to fallen people. Mm -hmm. People who have made mistakes and think that God can't use you. God chose David, knowing all this stuff about David, yet it didn't disqualify David. Matter of fact, God calls David the apple of his eye. That's right. Amen. And so it gives hope that your mistakes doesn't define you. You're, there's life after mistakes because God sits high and looks low and he intervenes and he gets in our business regardless of how we mess it up. All right. And so it, 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 when you know that you're, and, and then it, it takes away how we deal with each other. How can one big ball of mess judge another big ball of mess when we all at the end of the day a big ball of mess Needing God, mm -hmm. it should mm -hmm. keep us humble, exactly. knowing that it, it's God that's driving this ship. We just got to stay on board. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, and you know, as I thought about it, the, this lesson, um, you think about how we are given our families. Look at how when we, each of us, even just like some of, he was talking about how long they've been married. Um, we we don't we don't have the choice of who's going to be our in our family, right? right. And, and and basically we don't really have the choice of who our children are going to be, because God is the one that sets that in line. He, I was talking to my little goddaughter, because we had went out to dinner, and she's 17, and I've actually kept take, taking care of her since she was like four months old. But anyway, we mentioned the time before, and she said, "Was I here?" And we said, "No, you wasn't even thought of." <laughs> <laughs> she, she was born in 2006 and we were talking about something that happened in 2005 <laughs> and so it's like but but we were like well but well yep but what happened 2006 you were thought of because you because you, you came then you know so like I said we we don't really have choice of who our families are yeah God God is the one that chooses that and so that that's that's how it, it, it makes you look more at how how Mary her being a virgin you know come along and and the angel speaking to her and just I mean can you imagine how she felt you know having an angel coming and telling her that she's gonna you know born us bore somebody you know a son and yeah. and even though she's a virgin and she so I always think about that story it's like oh my goodness you know <laughs> and so but I could kind of relate to it because I remember during my period of time when I when I was pregnant I was like huh now the first time, I I, I I did not know what I was having, I, and I didn't even, I didn't even find out that I was having a boy, although I had a boy, Albert. <laughs> and so, but the second time, and the second time, I was like, oh, I know I'm having a girl. I just know I'm having a girl. I was, uh, I bought girl clothes and everything. I was like, I'm getting ready for it. I'm getting ready for it. And have another boy. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you probably remember that time. I remember that. Okay, and then I always tell everybody at the time that I got pregnant with my daughter, with Chancellor, uh -huh. I didn't even know that I was pregnant. I went to the doctor. I had a real bad cold. Uh -huh. And so the doctor says to me, uh, you have a little more than just a cold. <laughs> and I was like, what? 
Yeah. You said, well, you got something in the oven. I said, what oven? He said, oh, you got a baby. Well, of course, at that time, I was like, Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I know. I got to be having a girl this time. So uh. anyway, I, I did find out. But the first two times I did. But anyway, it, you know, it's funny how we have our families, and 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 you know, sometimes you know, unfortunately, things can cannot you know do, do not work out right. You know, sometimes they you know you be like, oh, is, is that you know is that some, is that somebody that's part of my family, or you know what I'm saying, or are they really doing that? But it just shows it just shows us how we still we still appreciate you know we appreciate what God gives us because right. our our children are straight All right. from the Lord Amen. All right. Uh huh. And then I was just going to add that this all this lineage and everything that you talked about is a good example of Romans eight twenty eight being walked out mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Work together for the good of them that are right. mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. according to his purpose, God's yeah. purpose. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. everything, whether it was good, bad, or indifferent, it all worked for God, mm -hmm. for, for God's plan to come to fruition, which was bring us that you know, that Christ might be born to reconcile man and have them to God and redeem us from our sins. It all worked out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's the strategist. He's connecting the dots, and it's 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 marvelous to sit back and watch the master work. Oh, marvelous! Yes, oh, yes, yeah. Something that's a crying shame. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 yeah. How yes. I was thinking about, you know, I know all of us know people that have, um, you know, done things that were not, you know, acceptable to whoever in society and have, mm -hmm. uh, have you know, like, you, they just, they be, it, it just seems like they're just going downhill and they're not, never going to come back up. And then next thing you know, when when you uh, see them, you know, it look, it's, it's obvious that God has taking control of their lives. I hear, I've heard you even make your, your te uh, even your testimony, uh, uh. Reverend Smith, of how you did things. And, and I mean, all of us have. I say, there's, none of us are perfect. There's nobody uh -huh. so. Uh, but it's like, it's really amazing how when people have, you know, turned their lives completely around, you know what I'm saying? You see them one time and the next thing you see me like, is that the same person? You know, but that just lets you know God does it all. He can do yeah. anything and, and uh, beyond, okay. you know, what we can even think of, you know. Uh -huh. And we may see somebody, and we we may look down on the person, but you know what? God is always looking looking up on. Them. He always knows because he put he put he puts his hands on them. That's it, you know. It has like he knows that. I think our pastor, Reverend Dr. Shelby L. Tate Sr., yeah. who is the pastor and founder of Rose Hill Missionary Baptist Church here in Seattle, yeah. Washington. Yeah. And he's been here for, woo, how many years has it been? Thirty-six. 30, 34, 35 years. So yeah. we, are, we are blessed to have him, mm -hmm. and we're thankful for all our our ministers that are here, uh, supporting us, and everyone that took our time to come to Sunday school. Amen. All right. Amen. God bless you all. <laughs>